Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord and welcome to another broadcast of United Praise. I I am just, I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> like I, I've been waiting for this one. Uh, we are talking tonight, we are praying tonight about releasing the fresh wind and fresh fire of God. And I cannot even begin to tell you how excited I am to, to just share this prayer hour with you as it pertains to this particular topic uh, of intercession. This is a mighty, mighty topic. I want you to believe God in faith, and I want you to go ahead and start sharing this broadcast in faith. Don't wait until you think it's got hot for you to share it or wait until you think that, you know, the word is speaking to you. I want you to believe in faith that this word is not just for you, but for many others this evening. So go ahead and share, share, share. I want you to like our page on Facebook. Love our page on Facebook. If you can find the love button, follow our page on Facebook, hop on over to YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, like our videos, hit that bell so that every time we go live like this, you get a notification that we are at the place called prayer. Amen. I just want to greet you in Jesus' name. For those of you who are viewing for the first time, thank you so much for tuning in. I greet those of you on YouTube and Facebook Live tonight. But again, for our first time viewers, I just want to remind you, those of you who have been sitting at this place of prayer, and for those of you who are new to this space, that our theme, our motto comes from Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, which says, men and women ought to always pray and not fear. Faint. I encourage you tonight not to faint. I encourage you tonight to stand strong, firm, and believe God for what he has said. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what wind is blowing your way. I want you to know that our God is able. For with men, it is impossible. But with God, how many of you know that all things, come on, somebody needs to say all things, all things are possible in the name of Jesus. Thank you again for viewing. Uh, I want to remind you that you can also reach out to us for prayer simply by going to our website uh, at utriplconline.org. And you can uh, hit that prayer button and type in your prayer request there. It will be communicated to uh, me and or a member of our team. And we will certainly get back to you in a timely fashion. Within 24 hours, you will have us connecting with you in prayer. You can also email us at prayer at utriplconline.org. You can email us directly simply by typing in prayer at utriplconline.org. That uh, email address is there for you on the screen. So please use it. If you need prayer, if you need intercession, this is what we do. Amen. And so I want you to, to connect with us in prayer. I thank God for those who make this broadcast possible, uh, namely none other than our United Covenant Churches of Christ presiding prelate, Bishop G.E. Livingston, and his absolutely amazing and anointed wife, Pastor Marcy Livingston. I thank God for them. I want you to go ahead and thank God for them as well. They are mighty leaders and they believe in the power of prayer. Amen. And so I thank God for their uh, support of this ministry tonight. And then, of course, I want to remind you that we are sitting literally on the cusp of our Holy Convocation 2022. And you're going to see that fl that flyer, that banner coming before you right now. Holy Convocation 2022 is reset for success. That is our theme for this year. Boldly repositioning yourself for an exciting new season. This is July 11th through the 14th, 2022. So it's right around the corner. We actually just ended our very last push, our very last um, uh, discount, uh, registration discount discount for this event. And so registration is back up to what it normally is. I want you to go to utriplconline.org and register today, today, today. We need to go ahead and, and book these rooms. I believe the room block is about to expire in a few days. So you need to do this now. I'm saying to you, you need to do this now. If you are hanging on the fence, you don't know if you should go, you're, you're sort of, uh, your money looks a little funny and things just really weird this time of year. I want you to trust God and believe God. He's tugging at your spirit for a reason. You need to be at Holy Convocation 20 2022 in Orlando, Florida, the city called Beautiful, July 11th through the 14th. To register, simply visit our website at utriplconline.org. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. To those of you who are here, I want to go ahead and give you a good God bless you, a big God bless you. Come on and greet me. Holla at me. Let me know that you are in the place and space tonight because I want to connect with you. 
in prayer this evening. So let's go ahead and greet Sister Marquita Bobbitt. God bless you, my dear sister and friend. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. God bless you, Sister Shalinda Peterson, for being here. Thank you so much, Sister Nalita Span, for being Minister Nalita Span, for being here. Sister Diana Bragg is here. Amen. From Palm Coast, Florida. Thank you so much for viewing and supporting. Minister Faithland Morrison is also here tonight, greeting United excitedly. I thank God for Draper's NTA uh, in Jamaica. This is uh, Dra Draper's New Testament Assembly, and I thank God for them. Uh, pastor Robert Phillips is the senior pastor. Praise God for Sister Petrina Wilson, I believe viewing out of Jamaica uh, as well. Blessings to you. Pastor Robert Phillips is here. God bless you, mighty man of God. I'm encouraging you to encourage others to tune in tonight. This is going to be a time of powerful intercession and declarations. Praise God for Pastor Sherry Dampier. Blessings to you from Brooklyn, New York. Thank God for Sister Bonnie Hill from Newburgh, New York. For Avram Mack from Jamaica, I believe. For uh, Doris, Sister Doris McKind. I'm not terribly sure where you're from, but welcome, welcome so much. We appreciate you being here. Uh, National Intercessor, uh, Elder Rett, blessings to you, woman of God. I see here uh, Sister Lee or Brother Lee, it could be. Uh, blessings to you. God bless you. I see here a Michelle Mosby or Moresby Gale. Blessings to you. Thank God for Elder McDougal being in our presence tonight. Sister Ashley is in the house. Mighty woman of God, thank you for tuning in. Overseer Dana Dotson is here tonight. Blessings to you. Bishop uh, Bodie is also here. God bless you, man of God. Bishop Findlater is here this evening. Thank you, man of God, for tuning in. Christian Martinez from Bishop Findlater's church is here this evening. God bless you. God bless you. Amelia Hope uh, is also here. Blessings to you as well. And thank God for our United Covenant Churches of Christ always supporting its own and encouraging you to register today. That is register today for Holy Convocation 2022 scheduled to be held July 11th through the 14th of 2022 in Orlando, Florida. Go to utriplecconline.org and register today. Amen. Adults. Okay. So we're still doing that. Correction. Adults, $45. Is that right? Okay. And $25 for children. You don't want to miss the reset. Okay. So we've extended. Um, oh no, it's going all the way to Father's Day. That's what it is. It's going all the way to Father's Day. So you need to go ahead and register now. Take advantage of this discounted registration rate. Praise God for Sister Anna Moore, who is here this evening. And thank you so much for uh, bringing that correction um, to our front. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Anna. Uh, the Lord's Prayer is here tonight. God bless you, my dear sister. And there's so many others who are here. I see Elder uh, Cox Thomas here with us this evening. Blessings to you, woman of God. Sister Yamil Bosquez from Bishop Finlater's Church. Blessings to you. Sheldon Anderson is here. God bless you. God bless you. Who else do I see? Patricia Peterson. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Pastor Edge is here. Blessings to you, mighty man of God. This is, the, uh, this is Minister Jennifer Jenkins Croner from Pastor Carly's Church. She is here this evening. God bless you, Minister Sandy Jones is here. Tracy Jones Young is also here. God bless you, Minister Sandy. Bless you, Sister Tracy. Praise God for, uh, let's see, we have Janetta Denise Allen. God bless you. I want y'all to come on in the room. This is the place of prayer and I'm calling on your spirits tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I want you to come out from up under your sheets and wherever you are and come on, hit, your, hit the floor of your heart, hit the altar of your heart. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank God. Amen. And again, we're reminding you that there is a Father's Day discount. So up until Father's Day, the, the registration rate has been reduced from $75 to $45 for adults, $25 for children. You want to take advantage of this right now, Sister Virginia Wilson. Blessings to you, mighty woman of God. Thank you so much for being here this evening. So I just want to remind you that tonight we are praying for the releasing of fresh wind and fresh fire. I bring to your front none other than Pastor Willie Carley, who is going to help us kneel in intercession. I praise God for him. He is back, y'all. He is back and he is stronger and better than ever. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, I miss the family. I really did. I miss the family. But we just thank God for men and women that don't mind kneeling, standing in the gap. God bless you, United. And joy, you know, you didn't put your name up there. That's the Lord's prayer. That's joy. I know joy. So we just thank God okay. for her and her. Her. I got a chance to meet her, uh, her pastor, her bishop. Amen. And God wow. bless. We have so much in kind. I believe that anybody that prayer that prays, we have something in kind. Amen. Amen. Spiritually, we're connected. <laughs> uh, 
right. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for that spiritual connection. We thank God for Pastor Carly being here again with us. Amen. And we know that Dr. Willie K. Carly is the senior pastor of Tabernacle of Faith Christian Fellowship in Newburgh, New York. He is doing big things, y'all. Um, the man of God is a mover and a shaker, and there's so much you don't know about him. I learned recently that he, I believe, is a deputy mayor. If that is, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, it's just crazy. Amongst the other things that he does, he wears that hat too. So we thank God for this anointed man of God who is here to pray with us this evening. And as I stated earlier, my God, we are talking about releasing fresh wind and fresh fire tonight. I need you to get some folk in the room because I sense the anointing and the power of God. And because of the opposition that I've been seeing and experiencing um, in recent days, I know that the enemy is mad, 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 and God is glad, glad, glad. And I'm excited about what heaven is doing. Oh my God. So I just want to release this word to you. Pastor Carly, we've been talking in recent days about um, shifting. We've been praying about that on United Praise, a season of shifting or a season of sifting and shifting rather. We've even spoken, we've just marched out of the Pentecost season. We've been talking about the fire of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about the move of God in that way. And so tonight we are talking about fresh wind and fresh fire. And it's easy for me to focus on fire because we all love to hear about that. But I want to speak to you from the direction of wind tonight. I want you to go ahead and put that in the chat. We are talking about the wind of God. Go ahead and put that in the chat. I want the wind of God to begin to blow this way right now out of your agreement, out of the place of your expectation. I just decree and declare that the wind of God is getting ready to blow, blow, blow. And I just want to share this word with you because let me tell you something about me if you have not figured this out as yet. I I will pray. Amen. First, I will teach second and I will preach last. I promise you in that order, I will pray, teach and preach. And tonight I am going to pray, but I want you to know that I'm a teacher at heart. So I want y'all to come to this place and leave with an understanding. I want to arm you with weapons and tools that the enemy cannot fight against and cannot win against. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So tonight, let me just tell you a little bit about the wind of God. I want you to turn with me really quickly. If you have your sword in front of you, turn with me very, very quickly to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 9. That's Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 9. I promise I will not waste your time. Here is what the word of God says. It says prophesy. This is what God said to the prophet Ezekiel. Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe, I want you to look at that word breathe right there, upon these slain that they may live. Prophesy unto the wind, son of man, and say to the wind, this is what God says, come from the four winds. In other words, come from the four corners of the earth. I call you in from the north. I call you in from the south, the east, and the west in Jesus' name. Oh, breathe and breathe upon these that may that they may live, these slain, these dead ones. Now here is, this is the KJV. Here is how the new uh, King James Version states this. Prophesy to the breath, Ezekiel. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, breathe on these dead things that they may live. So the prophet Ezekiel has been brought by God to a valley of dry bones. He's been brought by God to a place that is nothing more than a graveyard. He's been brought by the Holy Spirit to an area and a realm and a dimension that has no evidence of life, no evidence of anything being able to survive, no evidence of anything being able to thrive. So when you are staring into your valley of dry bones, your graveyard or the graveyard of your existence and all you see is what no longer breathes, what no longer speaks, and what no longer moves. The question is, what do you do? And the word of God tells us here what we do when we run up on situations that look like there is a do not resuscitate order on them. When there is a situation that says you will no longer thrive, that this thing will no longer survive, it will no longer live. There's nothing left that you can do with this. In other words, let me bring it into your house. When there is a situation that says don't bother praying for your son anymore because he's too far gone, there's nothing that you can do to bring him back. When you're, when, when the, when 
the, the enemy comes to you and says, don't bother lifting up your daughter anymore. Stop fasting for her because there's nothing that can be done. She is just way too out there. She can't come back from her place of destruction. She can't come back from her place of trouble. When you look into your bank account and you don't see what you want to see, and my God, the decimal points are not moving in your favor, and the enemy would come to you and tell you that you're not going to get a raise on that job, that business that you just started will never thrive, will never survive. And the things that you're trying to do to put money and cash in that bank account is never going to work. All your streams of income are drying up and there's nothing flowing into it. When the enemy speaks to you like that and you're looking into your financial valley of dry bones, how do you respond? What in the world do you do? The word of God tells us in Ezekiel 37 and 9 that there are four winds. Come on, somebody holler four winds. There are four winds of God. There are four winds that God uses in, 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 in warfare. And I know this sounds strange to some, but I want you to stay with me for a minute. The word of God says, he told the prophet Ezekiel as he took him into a valley of dry bones and all Ezekiel saw as he looked out upon the plains, uh, upon the valley area were nothing but skeletons, nothing but carcasses of things that once lived, but no longer, uh, can no longer live, no longer breathe, no longer move. The word of God says, God told Ezekiel, to begin to prophesy. Somebody needs to holler prophesy. That's right. When the enemy is prophesying, you need to start prophesying. I decree and I declare to you that you right now are a prophet of the most high God. If you can open up your mouth and make public open decrees about what God says, you are prophesying what, what the word of God has already told us about our future. He said, Ezekiel, you need to prophesy and you need to prophesy to something very specific. You need to speak to, watch this in the New King James uh, version. It says, you need to prophesy to the breath. This word breath here in the Hebrew is the word uh, ruah. It comes from the Hebrew word ruach, which means breath. It means air, but it also means spirit. What God told Ezekiel to do was to speak to four spirits. Come on, I'm talking to somebody tonight. These four breaths, these four winds are actually four spirits. That's what the word of God says. These are four spirits that are agents of war. They are positioned in the heavens. They have been sent by God to do war. In other words, God says, when you find yourself in a situation that looks like complete death, when you find yourself in a situation that looks like rigor mortis has set in, when you find yourself in a situation where you're having to autopsy your dreams and your visions and your hopes, and you're having to autopsy the, the thing that God told you would live and not die, I'm here to tell you tonight, God says you need to begin to prophesy. He says you need to begin to call in four winds. You need to call in the east wind of God. I need to tell you that this is doc there is documented proof of what I'm saying in scripture. Call in the east wind of God. Can I tell you what the east wind of God does? The east wind of God can be found in Exodus chapter 10 and verse 13. Let me tell you what Exodus 10 and 13 says. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought what? An east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. The east wind of God. Let me tell you what this does. It brings correction and it brings judgment against the forces of darkness. Somebody needs to decree and declare tonight that it is the east wind of God that will bring judgment on the things that are trying to bring judgment on my life. It'll bring judgment on the things that are trying to bring darkness, hopelessness, and despair, discouragement into my circumstances. I call on the east wind of God in the name of Jesus to stand up and blow on and challenge every single thing that is working against my destiny, my increase, my prosperity, working against my productivity in Jesus name. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us that the, it was the east wind that brought the locusts and, and it was also the east wind 
hallelujah, that bankrupts the enemy. And so it dispossesses the oppressor of his possessions and bankrupts the enemy. The, the, the east wind of God knows how to take the resources of hell and squander them. The east wind of God knows how to take the things that the enemy is using to enrich himself and scatter them in the name of Jesus. So when you need relief from, from dark forces, when you need for God in the name of Jesus to completely destroy the tactics and the works of the enemy, you need to start calling on the spirit of the east wind. East wind, I call you in even now in the name of Jesus. East wind, every force of destruction working against my life, every force of destruction trying to take my life in Jesus' name will submit itself to the spirit of the east wind. The east wind of God is blowing in my life to bring about a shift and a change and to scatter the enemy into dry places in Jesus' name. Somebody needs to get happy about this word tonight because the word of God is telling us what the wind of God does. And then we look at the west wind of God and we see that the west wind can be identified in Exodus chapter 10, same chapter y'all, and verse 19. And here is what it says. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. The the west wind of God is the wind that brings deliverance. The east wind brought the locusts to cause Pharaoh and all of his armies and everybody in Egypt to feel the licks, as we would say in the West Indies, or to feel the wrath of God. But it was the west wind that God sent to blow the locusts out. In other words, the west wind is the wind of mercy. The west wind is the wind that brings deliverance in the name of Jesus. The west wind is also the wind that brings abundance of rain from the sea in times of drought. It was the west wind that God used in 1 Kings chapter 18 when Elijah looked up to God and asked for an open heaven with rain falling. He said, God, it's been 42 months of a drought up in this place, three and a half years with no rain falling and no evidence of a drop coming from the sky. But even now I set my faith in agreement with heaven that it's about to pour and the heavens are about to open. And God said, he sent a cloud that was being blown. If you research scripture by a west wind and the west wind blew, the, blew a cloud in the size of a man's hand. And how many of you know tonight that God says abundance and rain and increase and latter rain is coming to you by the west wind of God. So if you need to see things raining down in your life, prosperity, increase, help, hope. If you need to see resources, whatever it is that is locked up in the heavens and rain needs to fall, I hear God say, call in the latter rain and call in the west wind to blow, hallelujah, the wind of God into your life, the wind of deliverance the wind of mercy. Father God, in the name of Jesus, if my life feels like it's up under a plague and it feels like the locusts are upon me and around me, God, I pray that you would send the west wind of deliverance to bring me out of this situation, bring me out of this circumstance. We need to call, hallelujah, Jesus on the warring winds of God. That's what I'm talking about tonight. The four warring winds of God. I'm here to tell you that there is a release coming in this season, not not tomorrow, not the next day, but right now as I'm speaking to you, we are loosing in the name of Jesus, the power of the winds of God, the winds that bring warfare against the enemy. I need you to understand that these are not just winds of direction, but these are winds that operate as a spirit and they know how to fight. They bring it to the enemy. And the word of God tells us that there is yet a north wind and the north wind of God can be identified in the song of Solomon chapter four and verse 16. It says, awake, O north wind, and come, thou south, blow upon my garden that the spices thereof may flow out. Come on, awake, oh north wind, get up. North wind, if you've been sleeping, I need you to get up right now. North wind of calming and soothing presence, I need you to wake up right now. North wind that brings the peace of God, I need you to wake up right now. North wind that holds the shalom of God and fights for my peace, wake up out of your slumber right now. I need you in the name of Jesus. Not only do you need to get up, but you need to bless 
blow on my garden. In other words, I need you to come across my ground and I need you to take hold of the seed that is still sitting on top of the soil and may not have taken root. I need you to scatter my seed so that things will grow. In other words, the north wind is the wind of your harvest, the wind of your provision, the wind of your financial breakthrough. We prayed about that last week, supernatural debt cancellation in the name of Jesus. My God, I need to see my money move. So north wind, I call you in. I need to see my resources increase. So north wind, I call you in to scatter my seeds, the seeds of prayer that I put in the ground, the seeds of love that I put in the ground, the seeds of my time that I've invested in others, the seeds of my faith that I put in the ground in the name of Jesus, the seeds of encouragement, exhortation, the seeds of praise and worship when it looked like there was nothing to praise or worship about. Every seed that I have planted, I command you to respond to the north wind. It will blow you from one place to the next. It will scatter my seed across my ground. And in Jesus' name, it will coax a harvest like I have never seen. The word of God allows us to know that there is a south wind. And I want you to forgive me for not putting this on the screen, but just follow my lead. Job chapter 37 and verse 17 tells us that there is a south wind. It says, how thy garments are warm warm when he quieted the earth by the south wind. The south wind is the wind of comfort. The south wind is the wind of restoration. The south wind is the wind of provision and blessings and prosperity. And so we just decree and declare tonight that the winds of God are blowing in our lives. It's blowing so that our money can move. It's blowing so that productivity, prosperity increase in the name of Jesus will align itself with our lives. It's blowing to bring the comfort and the peace of God. The wind of God is blowing in the name of Jesus to combat the forces of the enemy. The wind of God is blowing in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, to scatter darkness. The wind of God is blowing right now for harvest and increase. The wind of God is blowing in my season of drought. It causes rain to fall. It causes the heavens to open. Somebody tonight needs to get happy about the winds of God, God the warring winds of God that will fight for us. This is warfare, and many of you don't realize that when we talk about the wind and the fire of God, we're talking about warfare for these winds. These breath are ruach. They are spirits. My God, and the Holy Ghost says you need to start calling them in. Call them in from the north. Call them in from the south. Call in the winds from the east and the west in the name of Jesus. And when these four winds came together, here is what God told Ezekiel would happen. He said, son, you need to start prophesying unto these winds right now. Prophesy in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to tell the wind what God said. Can I tell you something about these four winds? The wind from the east, the wind from the west, the north, and the south must respond to the word of God. It must respond to the word of God. That's why God told Ezekiel, prophesy. Open your mouth and say what God said. And when you open your mouth and you call on the spirits of these four winds, they are coming with life. They are coming with breath. They are coming with the ruach of God. They are coming with the spirit of resuscitation, revitalization, restoration, and revival. In the name of Jesus, every dead thing in the presence of these four winds must respond to the word of God. You've got to live and not die and declare the works of God. You've got to move. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, you've got to get up. I'm speaking to some stuff that people have diagnosed as being dead in your life. I'm speaking to some things that haven't breathed in a while in your money, in your mind, in your spirit, in your family, in your friends, in your finances, however it's going. I'm speaking to some things that show no signs of life. I'm speaking to the things that people have already gathered in the cemetery and put six feet in the ground put a headstone on it and gave the benediction and walked away and said it will not live again. I dare you to believe God for what he said. We call in the winds of change in the name of Jesus for the winds are shifting circumstances, situations. I'm telling you things are turning in the name of Jesus. I hear God say what once was dead will live again. You need to begin to prophesy son of God. You need to begin to prophesy daughters of Abraham. You need to open your mouth and be 
begin to speak over every do not resuscitate order and decree and declare that the word of God, hallelujah, is commanding every wind to come in from every direction and speak to your valley of dry bones. I speak to the stuff that's dried up. I speak to the stuff, hallelujah, that has decayed. I speak to the places of rigor mortis in your ministry and in your mind and in your spirit. I speak to the places where there is decay and putrefaction in Jesus name, where there is rotting flesh. I speak in Jesus name to every kind of, of, of how should you say, anything that is eating up every maggot, anything. I speak to canker worms. I speak right now in the name of Jesus to the season of palmer worms. I speak to the locusts. I speak to all of these things in your life and I decree and I declare that something is getting ready to get up and live. I'm here to tell you that God is not speaking about natural wind because can't no natural wind outside wake up the dead. But the wind of God, the wind of God, the north, the south, the east, and the west wind of God can wake and shake every dead thing in our path. I speak in the name of Jesus. I speak to your resources and I know what I'm saying because I know what I'm going through, but I speak in the name of Jesus to those dreams that you've been having and the enemy said it's dead, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead. It died a long time ago. Don't bother praying about it. Don't dust off the journal that you wrote the notes in. Don't bother to blow off the pieces of paper that you used to write down the business plan. Don't bother about it, it's not going to happen. I say to you tonight, that dream is about to live. That dream is about to get up and move. I'm here to tell you that I see the knee bone connected to the, to the leg bone and I see the knee bone connected to the thigh bone and I see the leg bone connecting again to the foot bone in the, to the ankle bone and the ankle bone to the foot bone in the name of Jesus. We're calling back together every skeletal remain of your dreams, of your plans, your hopes, your visions, your aspirations, whatever they are. I hear God say some things are about to speak again. They are about to live again in the mighty name of Jesus, Pastor Carly. And so we want to pray over the people of God tonight. We want to pray over what is no longer showing evidence of life. We thank God for the fire of the Holy Ghost. We talked a lot about that. We prayed a lot about that over the past Pentecost season. We know what the fire of God can do. But tonight we are praying for the wind of God like never before. We are praying for winds of change. We are praying for winds of restoration, winds of revival, winds of renewal. I'm here to say that somebody is about to see something new in Jesus name. You're about to see something new. Listen to me. If I'm talking to you, I need you to go ahead and put this in the chat because we want to come into agreement with you right now. In the name of Jesus, Sister Tori, it's good to see you. Blessings to you, woman of God. Good, great to see you, uh, Pastor Cox, tonight, Pastor Z. I want to come into agreement with somebody tonight who's believing God to breathe into a dead thing. Pastor Carl, do you remember what, what, what God said, what Jesus said to Martha? When Martha said, I know that I'm going to see <laughs> Jesus said, you're going to see Lazarus again. You'll see him again. And she says, yeah, I know I'll see him in the resurrection. <laughs> what did Jesus say, Pastor Carly? In response to Martha, you're on mute, sir. Today, 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 what? today it, we don't have to wait for tomorrow. We don't have to wait for the future today. You know, one of the things, and can I just, just get a little bit, uh, one of the things you were just inspiring me and I was just, I was taking notes and I was listening to everything because I haven't heard it preached from that perspective before. And then one of the things that the Lord dropped in my spirit, he's like, wow. He said, this is what he was talking about and uh, talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And you don't know which way is coming. Sometimes God will bring deliverance. Sometimes God's going to bring peace. Sometimes God is going to bring judgment. Sometimes God's going to bring renewal of spirit, renewal of mind. We don't know what God is going to do. But if we pray, we know that God will see us through. If we learn to hold on to God's unchanging hand, he will be there today, not when the resurrection. Everybody's always waiting for the time to come. Come on, Tabernacle. You know what I'm talking about. We're not talking about let's get the joy when, when we wake up in heaven. Amen. God has called us to have joy and peace today. God has called us to have peace today, deliverance today, our future and everything today. That's right. Leg bone connected to the thigh bone, thigh bone connected to the hip bone. That's we're going to get together today. We're going to run it's coming together. <laughs> Amen. We don't have to wait. 
And that's what he was telling Martha. He says, I, I, I know you know about that, but I'm talking about what's getting ready to happen today. And we saw Lazarus rise up today, not next week. This is it. Not in 30 days. This is it. Not and, soon. And today. Today, Pastor Carly. And wasn't he already stinking and rotting? Isn't that what the word of God said? Never it was said. number, it was day number four, y'all. And it was sweltering Jerusalem, Palestine heat of a yeah. hundred plus degrees. This body was boiling, it was bubbling, it was, it was just liquid. OK, and the word of God says that he already started to stink. And when things start stinking in your life and it looks like nothing is going to change and nothing is going to move and nothing is going to live and nothing is going to get up and nothing is going to rise again. God says, I am the God, hallelujah, that knows how to take the things that stink and make it work and make it live. I can speak to it in Jesus' name. I tell you, the aroma of God can come out of smelly, stinky situations. God is a God of revival. He is a God who knows how to speak to dead things, and dead things respond. Yes. And I'm here to tell you tonight that the Word of God is living. The Word of God is living. The Word of God tells us in Jeremiah chapter, I forget what it was, Holy Spirit, that the Word of God is like a fire. Shut and up. like a hammer that breaketh up the rocks. And I'm here to tell uh, yeah. you tonight that the word of God has power, 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 wonder working power. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I'm here to tell you tonight that if you need to see breakthrough, you need to start praying for the wind of God. Start praying for the wind of God, the winds that are being held up and spread across the four corners of the earth. The four squares of the earth is what God says. He says, call them in because it's the wind that's going to bring seasons of change change and seasons of deliverance and seasons of breakthrough. It's the wind that's going to bring the peace of God. It's the wind that's going to blow on your, your stuff. It's the wind that's going to blow across your ground and bring increase in the name of Jesus. I am talking to somebody tonight. I tell you, I can't even get these, these names and, and these comments up on the screen right because I just feel God up in this place. But we are just going to move right now into our time of prayer. And Pastor Carly, I see some folk already saying that this word is for them. They're already decreeing and declaring that this word is speaking to their hearts tonight. So I just want you to come on. Ooh, let me see. Somebody, somebody here said, somebody here said, breathe on me. I'm trying to find that person right here. They said, well, breathe me, on me. Let's speak to that person regardless of their name. All right. Well, remember, come on, Pastor Carly. Remember when Jesus uh, called Lazarus' name? It was mm -hmm. the breath in his body that came forth, and then everything in Lazarus rose. So when God speaks, he brings forth the word, and the word comes through power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, the word God. comes through the wind of God, and he's going to do everything in your life so that it will come together, and God will make a move that you can't even believe. Your yes, family God. can believe. Martha can believe. Come the on. disciples can believe. The Come pastor of the church can believe. <laughs> and she's Jesus. supposed to be the one that is anointed of God, but can't believe how God is moving in the wind. My See, God. we're always trying to put God in a box. You can't box God. Hallelujah. There you go. God. There you now go. I feel like preaching. I know we're supposed to be praying. So, Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus. All those that want you to breathe upon yes. them will breathe today in the name of the Lord. Uh, Father, just like you did on Calvary, just like you Jesus. did in the upper room, just like you did in Genesis, the first chapter, God, just like you did in my day, God, just like you did in my father's day, God, just like you're going to do in the future, God. Breathe and let your word come forth. And Father, everything that your word says, God, it will devour. Father, bring forth the judgment, bring forth the peace, bring forth the joy, bring forth everything and anything, oh God, that you claim it should be, oh God, and these bones shall live. That means that every man, woman, and child that wants God to breathe upon them shall live. They shall not die. And we bind the hand of the enemy. We come against everything that is not like you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now let them feel a refreshing in their mind, a refreshing in their body, a refreshing in their family, a refreshing in their finances, a renewal, oh God, in their pocketbook, a renewal in their heart, in Jesus. their mind, in their soul, in their body, in everything, oh God, that they yield unto you. Father, Jesus. it said, according hey. to the word in Romans, Paul said, there's a war in our members. Mm -mm. Breathe hey. upon our bodies. Yes, God. Well, the east wind that's coming against us to judge us. 
quell the things of the enemy that he's trying to do to destroy us. Yes, God. Bring forth a calming wind. The ones who are feeling disgruntled. Jesus. We find that spirit of suicide. Jesus, Jesus. We come against everything that's not like God. You Jesus. hang in there. You shall live and not die. I declare and decree in the name yes, of Jesus. If we begin to hold on to the things of God, God will heal your body. I in the name pray. of Jesus. God will do something for Hallelujah. you that nobody could ever believe. My God. Trust me in him today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we pray for those tonight who are that I am under a season of heavy adversity and attack. I see the enemy blowing the winds and the locusts into my atmosphere. I see the enemy sending all manner of attacks in different forms. I'm feeling it. I've been under it for a while. And Holy Spirit, I need your encouragement to blow into the room in the name of Jesus. That means I need your, I need the east wind of God to come in and blow away the spirit of depression and blow on the spirit of anxiety and blow on the spirit of disappointment blow on the spirit of desperation right now in Jesus name blow on the spirits of difficult things Father God I need the wind of God to show up in my life and do for me what nothing else can do I call in the east wind of God for rescue I call in the east wind of God to bring judgment in the name of Jesus upon the forces of darkness in other words I am saying like David said in Psalm 35 I need you to fight against those that are fighting against me and contend with those that contend with me take a hold of your shield and your buckler and stand up for my help my God in Jesus name Father God look on the things that oppose the vision look on the things that oppose my health look on the things that oppose my salvation look on the things that are standing in direct opposition to my progress Holy Spirit I need the east wind of God to come in like a mighty rushing wind and push on the enemy push back on the forces of darkness push back on every force that is coming against the, the, the on, anointing that is on my life working against my assignment working against and questioning my authority I bind that spirit right now I bind those spirits right now in the name of Jesus father God I call on the east wind of God to strip the enemy of all of his weapons all yes. of his resources everything that he is using in his arsenal tonight to try to work against me father God I pray even now that you will bankrupt hell in the name of Jesus I say bankrupt Satan's arsenal bankrupt his place of supply go into his storehouses break into his storerooms in the name of Jesus and deny him the ability to have resources that can be used to form weapons against me I thank you tonight God because you are working Father, I thank you tonight, God, because you are working. I see you working, my God. I see you, Holy Ghost, speaking for me in places where I cannot speak for myself. I see you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, turning the arrows of hell back into the abyss. In Jesus' name, I see you, Holy Spirit, and I thank you right now, oh God, for the arrows of God's deliverance, for the arrows of the Lord's deliverance being re revealed and released in my life. I need somebody tonight to to begin to call on the arrows of God's deliverance in Jesus name for that is what this east wind is doing it is condemning the thing that is coming up against you and we call in the west wind father in the name of Jesus that west wind for deliverance that west wind for mercy that west wind that looks on my situation and my circumstance and says she's been through enough he's been through enough back up. Get off of her. Get off of him. Tonight in the name of Jesus, I pull every monkey off your back. I bind the spirit of addictions. I come against every spirit holding you hostage and, and having you in, and putting you in bondage and in chains. Even now, those chains of unrighteousness are being broken and dismantled in the name of Jesus. I come against the addiction of smoking. 
the addiction, the addiction of drinking, the addiction of pornography, whatever addictions you are dealing with right now in Jesus' name. I speak to the addiction of even shopping, overspending, the addiction of cursing, the, the spirits right now that are working against your spirit to tie you to strongholds in the name of Jesus. We break every stronghold. We bind every spirit. Yeah. We loose every chain. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, break the yokes that bind us, my God. Father, free us, deliver us, send salvation into our household. Save everybody who does not know you in the pardon of their sins. We call on the spirit of salvation, that most basic, basic form of deliverance, this deliverance from sin, the deliverance from death and hell. We call on that spirit tonight to rule and super rule in our families, in our neighborhoods. God, in the name of Jesus, we speak to those on our jobs who don't know you. We speak to those who pass us by in the street and don't know you. We speak the spirit of salvation into the atmosphere, God, and then we pray for the west wind to blow in abundance and blow in rain in Jesus' name, even as you set the west wind for Elijah, the prophet God, and you opened up the heavens and you allowed rain to fall after seasons of drought. We thank you right now that you are bringing water upon our dry places. Hallelujah, God. About Sunday, hey God, you are bringing water upon our dry places for you are the God of the latter rain. And I thank you that even as Hosea said it, you are the God of the latter rain in the name of Jesus. So send in the latter rain, God. We pray, Father, for this to move, to work, and operate in our lives. In Jesus' name, Pastor Carly, won't you pray for those who need the north wind of God to blow tonight? Father God, we thank Hallelujah, you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for every soul that's here, oh God. Bring the calming and the soothing presence of your spirit, oh God. Father, one of the things you showed me and God and I, and I speak to the people, oh God, for those that need a calming and a soothing presence, oh God, those that need a season of harvest, God, when you blow in, God, and you provide and you give them what they need, oh God. So, Father, I speak unto their voice. I speak unto their inner man. I speak unto the spirit that you have given them, oh God. Father, we have your wind on the inside. We have the pneuma on the, the inside of us, oh God. And it's an anointed, God, so we use our breath. We use everything that we have to speak those things that are not, oh God. So in our heart, oh God, out of our mouth, oh God, shall speak the glories of God, the miracles of God. So God, those that need a blessing, those that want you to breathe on them, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, they begin to speak those things which are not, stand on it in the name of Jesus, and God, do not allow the things of this world to deter them. So God, we give you glory, and we give you honor, and we give you praise. We thank you, God, for allowing us, God, to speak, oh God your word through the breath that you breathe into our body oh god father you said in your word that you made us in our image in your image oh god so therefore god what you say shall happen god we agree and we touch and agree right now in the name of jesus so therefore you planted in us god the power to breathe and to speak oh god those things which are true and those things which are right so god we prophesy unto our problems in the name of jesus you shall not prevail we cast you back to the pits of hell. Now, God, move upon the people of God. Oh, God, let the world see, oh, God, a transformation in us. God, I thank you for the transformation, oh, God, the, the things and the changes that the wind may bring, oh, God, so that the true Christ, the true people, the true church, God, those that have been called by your name and are worshipers, uh, God, we will see the difference, feel the difference, smell the difference. Because God, your wind brings a good aroma, oh God. It removes those foul things, oh God. If the chaff that is thrown in the air and the wheat, oh God, shall fall and all the chaff will move away, oh God. Father, we are strong in you because you made us strong. Because we've been in your image, oh God. We've been in your presence, oh God. And we thank you for your anointing. So God, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. And we ask, oh God, Breathe, God, upon the men and the women, oh God, that call upon your name. Bring for the deliverance, oh God, that they're calling for, that you place inside of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I want to pray for those of you tonight who are saying, God, I need the south wind of God. I, I call in that spirit right now because there is too much upheaval, there is too much chaos. And let me tell you something, this is, this is global. 
We turn on our news, we pick up our phones, and even the news alerts with these constant shootings, Pastor Carly. Mm -hmm. With these constant acts of gun violence and spirits of, of, of uh, premature death that are being cast out there right now. You can see evil winds working against the, the, the progress of this world, the progress of the church. You see it. There is confusion, chaos, calamity, mayhem, madness, and foolishness breaking off and breaking out everywhere. And it's not just in the United States of America. It's global. The, 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 the globe is under attack. This blue marble that we live on that spins, huh? I'm here to tell you it is under attack by the enemy. But I hear God say that he is sending a south wind. He is sending a wind of peace. I want you to, I want to remind you of what he said in Job 37 and 17 pertaining to the south wind. How thy garments are warm. It comes bringing garments. You understand? And these garments bring warmth. It brings comfort. It brings a sense of security. It says, when he quieteth the earth by the south wind. God says, I'm bringing a spirit of quiet. There is a hush coming over this planet. There is a, a sense of peace and tranquility. There is a stillness. Hallelujah, Jesus. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, my God, I, I call forth the stillness of God. The, the, the word of Habakkuk 2.20 says that the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. There is a quietness, God says, that I am bringing into this place and space. And I want you to know, Zion, that we are atmosphere changers. We are the ones who can command the winds. And I need you to know tonight that the ability to rule the winds from the east and north the south and the west lives on the inside of you. You have the ability to call in spirits that will bring with them power to war against the enemy. Every atmospheric disturbance comes under the control of the four winds of God. You need to learn how to come into agreement and covenant with God's word and begin to decree and declare what he has said. But when you open up your mouth, prophet and prophetess, you can prophesy to the winds. You can prophesy to the ruach, the breath of God, and you will see change come in the name of Jesus. So I speak to everything that every nor'easter, every spirit of every tornado like spirit, every hurricane like spirit, every tsunami like spirit, in the name of Jesus that has been blown into our lives. I call in the winds of change from every direction in the name of Jesus to challenge the winds of hell, to challenge what is blowing against you. In Jesus' name, I decree and I declare that the north wind of the south wind of God is making its way into your trouble. It's making its way into your disturbance. Everything that's been keeping you awake at night in the name of Jesus. I hear God say, the south wind brings the shalom of God. I decree and I declare that there is nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken on your life. In Jesus' name, it brings with it the completeness, the wholeness of God. It brings with it the quietness of God. According to Isaiah 26 and 13, I will keep you, I promise you, sons and daughters, I will keep you in perfect peace. It's a peace of perfection. It's a peace that is not broken. It is a peace that is whole. It's a peace that'll keep you. It's a peace that'll wrap you in his arms. It's a peace that'll, what did the, what the Job say? It comes like a blanket. It comes like a garment of warmth and it wraps itself around your cold moments. In the name of Jesus, I just release right now restoration, peace, and quiet into your life. Every loud thing, every loud voice telling you that God will not change this situation. I decree and I declare that those voices are being silenced now in Jesus' name. Those voices are being silenced now in the name of Jesus. Every negative person in your place and space who cannot find a decent word of encouragement to say to you but can only speak negative things. I decree and I declare that this wind will cause their tongues to cleave to the roof of their mouths in Jesus' name. They will either speak peace or they will zip it in Jesus' name. They will either speak peace or they will close their mouths. I pray that their speech will be turned into circles 
focus and fall upon deaf ears in Jesus name this is what I say over you uh, that God will bring encouragers into your midst he's bringing in spiritual cheerleaders uh, who will begin to advocate for you who will begin to push you hallelujah into your destiny into purpose with their words with their decrees with their declarations with their proclamations these are public official announcements that God is making in your life that your season is about to change I need you to make this proclamation I need you to put it in the chat right now my season is about to change the winds of change are blowing in my life that is your proclamation a proclamation is a public official announcement you understand it's an announcement that has that is official because it was sent by the authority of a ruler and I need you to open your mouth and understand that God has sent you to proclaim what he has said in the name of Jesus. You are a herald tonight. You are a messenger of God. You are a messenger of the king. In the Old Testament, when the king needed to make an announcement, he didn't get up and get on a microphone. He didn't get on his Twitter page or his Snapchat or his Instagram. He sent out a herald and the herald would ride on his stallion into the town square and wait for the crowd to gather. Cause when the crowd saw the herald, they knew that he came on assignment from the king. So I need you to open your mouth tonight and stand as a herald in the spirit so that the enemy knows that you are coming under the authority of the king. And the word that you bring, hallelujah, is from the mouth of the maker. Open your mouth and declare and decree what the king has said proclaim it. The herald would open his mouth. He didn't have to sound a horn or blow a trumpet. He would just sit there on his stallion and just knowing that he came from the king's palace is what caused the quiet to come over the crowd. The crowd would sit there and wait to hear the word that must be proclaimed. And I'm here to tell you that demons are sitting on your front row waiting to hear what your God has said. Decree it and declare it. Open your mouth and it shall come forth in this season in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and make divine proclamations over your life. The winds of change, revival, restoration, hallelujah, are blowing this way. The south wind, the east wind, the north wind, the, the, the west wind are coming in in the name of Jesus from all four corners of the earth. And they are joining forces and they are warring for me. Somebody needs to declare that tonight. The winds are warring for me. The winds are warring for me and I am prophesying to my winds. I'm telling my winds what my God said. And the word of God allows us to know that the winds obey. <laughs> the winds obey. You prophesy unto the wind. Ezekiel, you're standing in a valley that looks like nothing is gonna get up. You're standing in a place that looks like nothing can stand on its own anymore. I command you to speak to your valley of dry bones. I command you to speak over every graveyard. I command you to talk the writing off the headstones. I command you to erase the date of death on off the headstones right now. Begin to speak. I hear God say he's about to turn over some cemeteries. Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's about to overturn some cemetery like he did in the marketplace when he overturned the tables of the money changers and those who were selling doves. God says, I'm about to flip some stuff up in the graveyard of your life. I see some graves being overturned, uprooted, dug up, exhumed, bodies being exhumed in the name of Jesus. For life is coming. Life is coming in the name of Jesus. And I know we are past the 10 o'clock hour. I'm not guided by the clock anymore. I'm guided by the power of the Holy Ghost, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. But I want you to know that we are standing in agreement with you, that God is gonna do this for you. We are in our season of holy convocation, Pastor Carly. And we are believing God that before convocation commences, that the winds of God will already begin to blow. We're not looking to move into the hotel sanctuary, if you will, to wait for the wind of God to begin blowing. No, sir, we are coming in, <laughs> commanding. Right you hear what I'm saying? Right you hear what I'm saying? Yes, God, yes, God, the wind goes before us. Yes, <laughs> yes God, yes. the wind goes before us. We set the wind before us because you have to understand yes. that when you call in the winds, you're calling in, you're actually initiating warfare. Remember what I told you, the word breath here, Okay, every time you see breath or wind, it is the Hebrew word ruach, which comes from the Hebrew word ruach, 
for the Holy Ghost, for the breath, for the spirit of the living God. It's a spirit. You are calling in the spirits of the wind and they are coming in on your command because God says you have the authority to prophesy. You are an oracle of the Most High God. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy to your wind and tell it what you needed to do. East wind, I need you to bring judgment against the thing that's judging my life right now unfairly. I need you to bring judgment against every accusing tongue. I need you to bring judgment against every force of darkness. I need you to bring judgment against spiritual wickedness in high places. I need you to judge the thing that's judging my life right now. I speak, to, I prophesy to you, East Wind, do your job in the name of Jesus. Dispossess the oppressor of his possessions and bankrupt his storehouses. Take all of his stash in the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to command and prophesy to your west wind. Bring the spirit of deliverance. Bring seasons of mercy upon my life, upon my children. We may not deserve it, but we need the mercies of God. This is why the word of God says that his mercies are new. Pastor Carly, not every other day, not every month, but every morning, my God. I need new mercies, the songwriter said, morning by morning. New mercies I see. Great is thy faithfulness, my God. You're a faithful God. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God. I'm about to say, he's a faithful God. He will do what he says. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promise. He's faithful. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And I just thank God for his goodness and his mercy. God, we thank you for the latter rain. Thank you for the wind that flows in our hearts and our minds and our soul. We thank you for the spirit of the living God. Father, we can't do this thing without you. And Lord, we don't want to do these things without you. Father, if you would not have spoken to Ezekiel, those bones would not have lived. Father, if you had not spoken unto us, bring them to our bodies, we should not live. God, we bless you. We honor you today for allowing us to live for the wind. Thank you for the breath of God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, the comforter that will lead us and guide us and teach us. Renew our minds and renew our spirits. Father, I thank you for the men, women, the men, women, and child that are here, the intercessors. Father, we're getting ready to go into our convocation and we already know that you're there. Father, we are already riding on your wings of eagles. We're soaring into you, but God, do your job. Nobody can do it but you. Father, if, it, if you don't do it, it won't be done. So I thank you for what you're going to do in the convocation. Touch men and women, deliver, set free, bring revelation. Renew minds, renew spirits. Let us all understand what thus saith the Lord. Speak, God. Use the wind in their bodies that they can speak into our lives so that we can receive it and take it home and preach it to the others. In Jesus' name, amen. I saw Sister Ashley Hill in the chat earlier. I'm not quite sure if she's still here, but the Holy Spirit told me to release this word to you, Ashley. I hear God say that the wind of encouragement, the wind of encouragement to run on is blowing in your direction right now. The wind of inspiration, the wind, God says, I'm giving you a second wind. <laughs> Holy Spirit says, I'm blowing on you, Ashley. I'm, I'm blowing on all of the discouraging places. I'm blowing on all of the hard places. I'm blowing on the stuff that looked like it was shot down and killed a long time ago. God says, I am sending a wind of revival into your life, a wind of inspiration, a wind of inspiration, Ashley. I don't know if you are still here on this broadcast, but... I see your mom here, so prayerfully she'll let you know. But God says he is sending a wind in your life to, to literally shift you and to pick you up, Ashley. Places that you don't have the strength to walk to. I hear the Holy Spirit say he is sending his wind to literally escort you. 
to your next place and your next season. He is escorting you into the courts of celebration. He's getting ready to throw you a party. <laughs> I just hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that. He is so excited. That's what I hear the Holy Spirit say. He is so excited about what he is getting ready to do in your life. There is a strong wind blowing towards you. I just want you to be encouraged. This sister right here. I don't know who this is, but I saw her name earlier in the chat, Pastor Carly, and I'm, I, I, you know, I was scrolling past looking for Ashley, and then I kept seeing her name over and over again, just in my spirit and even in the chat. And I just want to say to you, Justine Thompson Williams, that God says in this season, you're going to see tremendous winds of change coming into your life, tremendous winds of change shifting some things around. It, it, that's that's what these winds are sent to do. It's send to shift. It's sent to create drastic seasons of change. And so even now in the name of Jesus, I speak to your atmosphere and I speak to every form of corruption, anything corrupting your atmosphere right now, anything corroding your atmosphere. Those are the words I hear, corrupting and corroding your atmosphere. Justine, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. I hear God say that you are an atmosphere changer. That means you have the power within you to control winds. You hear what I'm saying? You need to change your atmosphere right now by speaking, prophesying to the winds in your life. You need to see them move. You need to see them activate. The Holy Spirit said, uh, he, he told um, He told the north wind to wake up. Because <laughs> sometimes, and let me see, I just want to make sure I'm saying this right. The north wind is the wind that brings calm and the soothing presence of God. It's the, it's the wind that brings seasons of harvest and increased. It, it blows on your ground and it spreads your seeds. I hear God say, you are about to see increase, Justine. In the name of Jesus, you are about, your spirit is about to become calm. I hear God say he's calming you right now. This word is calming you right now. This word is reinforcing within you what you already knew God was going to do, but you became quickly discouraged about because of what you've been facing. I hear the spirit of God said that his presence is making his entry into your home right now, right where you are. What you are feeling is the presence of God. The north wind of God is already blowing in your moment. And so I need you to know that the wind of God is blowing on your ground and every place where you have planted a good seed, you will see increase, you will see harvest in this season, in Jesus' name. So Father, I thank you for these words. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. What I'm looking for are four people, four people, because that's the number I hear, four people that Pastor Carly and I are going to pray for very, very quickly. I want you to just go ahead and put that in the chat. Pray for me. Just pray for me. That's it. The first four praise, pray for me's that we see, that's what we're praying for. That's what we're praying for. That's who we're praying for in Jesus' name. And then we're going to go. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Pray for me. Pastor Carly, pray for Sister Avram Mack. She's in Jamaica. Father, we lift up Sister Mack, oh God. Father, we lift her up before you, and you know everything about her, the situations, the issues, the problems, the joy, the everything, God, that she encompasses. Now breathe upon her situation that she will see you, God, move you, God. in a miraculous way. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, Father, I speak over Sister Shalinda Peterson, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, for this woman of God is saying, I need every wind from every direction to blow in my life. I am not being specific about which wind. I need them all. I need the wind of peace. I need the wind of harvest. I need the wind that will judge the things that are judging my life right now and trying to impede my progress. I need the wind, hallelujah, that brings uh, peace and, and tranquility. I need all the winds blowing in my life. So, Father, I pray that you right now, in the name of Jesus, will activate the prophetic within Shalinda. Open up the mouth of this woman of God and allow her to know that she has been given the authority to prophesy. To prophesy to the spirit in every wind, from every direction, from the four square, the four corners of the earth. She has the ability in her mouth, Father, to activate movement in every dead place. She has the ability right now in the authority of God operating on the inside of her. Father God, to wake up and shake up every dead thing in Jesus' name. And so, Shalinda, I decree and I declare to you that you are about to see movement. You are about to see dead things resuscitate and come back to life. You are about to see the impossible. I hear God say that the spirit of resurrection is in your mouth, daughter. 
Speak and you shall see it live according to the will of God in the name of Jesus. But here's the other thing I hear God say on the flip side. Don't you dare speak to anything that God has assassinated and buried. Don't you dare try to wake up stuff that God has killed and put in the backyard of your life. He says, put down the shovel, don't dig it up again. If it's gone, it's gone. But the things that God has told you shall live and not die will live in this season. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We've got two more, Pastor Carly. Pray for Sister Melissa Morris tonight. Father, we lift up Sister Morris, oh God. We thank you for her ministry. We thank you, God, for what you're doing inside of her. Now, God, we just ask that you stir up the wind inside of her, God. Let her bring forth the power of the Holy Ghost, O oh God. Let her speak those things that are not, O oh God, as though they are. Let the words of her mouth, O oh God, begin to change the atmosphere of her family, her friends, and everything that she does. Father, we lift her up and we, sur we surround her, God, with your love and your patience and your ability, God, to move in you spiritually. So, God, we just bless you and we honor you for her tonight. Cover her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we lift up Sister Janet Harden Bunch tonight, and we thank you, oh God, for this woman of God. We thank you, oh God, for she is one who believes in the power of prayer. She is one who walks in a place of faith, and God, she holds on to the horns of the altar, and she trusts you, oh God. And so, Father, I thank you that this intercessor in this is moving in the realm of the prophetic. Father God, you are waking up and shaking up gifts within her that she did not even know, know existed, oh Father God. Within her right now, they will become operational. I speak to them, Sister Janet Harden Bunch. I, what I hear God saying is that he is bringing the wind of spiritual gifts. That's what's being blown into your life. Spiritual gifts. You're going to see the manifestation of these gifts moving in your life in this season. You're going to be surprised to see how God is going to use you and what he's already put down on the inside of you. What he needs to have happen now is he needs for you to begin to prophesy. He needs for you to open your mouth and begin to speak to the winds that will bring this change in your life. In the name of Jesus, there's going to be a breakout of new movements. I see God doing it. You're going to be operating in whole new dimensions. And I'm not just using these words randomly, but I hear God say he's bringing you into different realms, giving you authority over different spheres, places that your feet have not um been placed on before God says you're about to infiltrate territories you've never been in the realm of the spirit but God says you need to begin to prophesy over the things that he is doing in you now call forth these winds of change in the name of Jesus call forth the winds of release because God says the spiritual gifts of God are being released upon you they are being released and they are being revealed in this season. This is your season of releasing and revealing in Jesus' name. I want to say to you tonight, Elder Rhett, I want to say to you tonight, Minister Rowe, uh, Sheldon Anderson, Yamil Bosquez, Patricia Peterson, Carla Poli, Justine, uh, already spoken over your life, Tatlin King, Matherson, uh, Sister Natasha, Jody Black, uh, yeah. speaking tonight in the name of Jesus, over Sister Twyla, uh, Nairi, Renee, Jamila, Marva, Sister Diana, Sister Nairi, Pastor Phillips, Sister Michelle, Annie Cypher Heath. I'm speaking over in the name of Jesus, Sister Petrina. Just uh, already prayed for you, Sister Virginia. And all of those who are asking for prayer tonight, in the name of Jesus, we are praying for you. We may not pray for you openly and publicly, but we are praying for you throughout the course of this week. If I called your name, we are praying for you. I want, I'm going to go through this chat again. I'm going to revisit it. And we are going to go ahead and pray for those of you that are indicating Sister Yvette, that you need prayer. Minister Nalita Span, that you too uh, need prayer in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Ellen McDougal, you're saying pray for me. I see this. I see this. Charmaine, pray for me in the name of Jesus. We are praying for you all. We are lifting you up. Lashana, in the name of Jesus, we're praying for you, my sister. We are praying for all of you that the wind of God, Elder Maggie, uh, Sister Maggie, will move in your life. Amen. Elder Thomas will move in your life in the name of Jesus. And thank you so much for praying for us, Minister Rowe. We give God praise and we thank him for how he has moved in this hour. We're going to bring our time of intercession to a close, but I need to share some things with you before you go. So don't move because I have some announcements you're going to want to stay tuned for. Number one, for those of you who have not yet registered for our Holy Convocation 2022 Reset for Success, it is being held uh, July 11th through the 14th, 2022 and hosted in Orlando, Florida, a.k.a. the city called Beautiful at the Rosen Plaza Hotel. You don't want to miss out on this event. We have a 
special going on right now of $45 uh, for registration for adults and 25 for our youth. So listen, these registration rates are usually much higher than this. I'm talking 70, I think, or $75. You can take advantage of this reduced rate right now, $45, um, up until Father's Day. After Sunday, that is it. We close the doors of this registration promotion and it is back to its normal price. I am asking you to register in faith today. Some of you are saying, Susan, I don't got it like that. Driving is not even profitable anymore because look at the price of gas. But I want you to know that if God has put it in your heart and you feel a tugging in your spirit to get to the convocation, I want you to call in the wind of provision in the name of Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? That's the south wind. That is the wind that brings in prosperity. It brings in calm. Yes, it does, but it also brings in prosperity and increase. I thank God for the north wind that does the same. It blows on your ground. And I just decree and declare that you are going to have provision set in front. God is setting provision in front of you to get to the holy convocation. I want you to come on. I want you to try your best, okay? Go ahead and register today at ucccconline.org. That is ucccconline.org. Register, register, register. You don't want to miss this move of God. Next week, Pastor Carly, on our broadcast, I am so happy, elated, and thrilled to tell you that none other than the presiding prelate of the United Covenant yeah. Churches of Christ yeah. will be right here front and center flat-footed. He is coming to cast a vision for this convocation. He is coming to speak into the lives of those of you who are here. Bishop is excited, y'all. He is excited. I tell you, he, he jumped on this invitation. So, yes, he will be here June 24th. That's next Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, Jamaican Time. That is 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to speak into your life. So don't miss this. Bishop G.E. Livingston, the last of the G.E.s. And then let me tell you, it just gets better and better and gooder and gooder, Pastor Carly. Because <laughs> the following week. July 1st, that's Friday, July 1st, Overseer Dan Johnson and Pastor Regina Kreider are hosting another night of impartation. I'm telling you, if you missed the first one, you do not want to miss the second one. This man and this mighty woman of God are nothing to play with. The anointing on them is strong. It's powerful. These are seers. I'm telling you right now, these are uh, ones who have eagle eyes and they are coming with the, with the mantle of the prophetic. They are coming with the mantle of, of the word of knowledge and, and just a hope and impartation will flow in this place. It's going to be wild. That is the first Friday in uh, July. You don't want to miss it. It is going to be powerful. So listen, get ready, get ready, get ready. Invite someone to join us. That's your homework. Invite someone to join us for our upcoming broadcast because it's going to be amazing. I'm going to relinquish this time to Pastor Carly to give us uh, the final words and a quick benediction. And we're going to loose you and let you go in Jesus name. Amen. I believe it's already been said. And there is nothing we can say, even the more great word, great delivery of the word. Amen. And I pray that people received it tonight. I know I received mine. Amen. I, I thank Amen. God he, he ministered to me. And I just I just give him praise for that. So that's all we can say. But amen. Amen. I'm speaking. I, I just feel this. I'm sorry. I, I just need to say this. Um I'm speaking to someone tonight because this is what I hear. Like I hear someone's spirit literally saying, I feel like God has forgotten about me. I feel like he's forgotten about me, but I'm here to remind you tonight that God has not forgotten you. The wind of change is blowing in your direction. I'm here to say to you that God wants you to master the power that he's given you over the operation of these winds. These winds are warring for you. God has not forgotten. God is blowing many blessings your way, blowing many uh, 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 seasons of favor in your direction. But you need to believe him. He has not abandoned you in any way, shape, or form. God is with you, and he is faithful to his word. So I just want you to hold on to that tonight, whoever you are. I call you out of your place of discouragement. I call you out of your cave, and I command you to move in the authority of God. Amen. Command your wins tonight. Everybody command your wins tonight in the name of Jesus. I want you to be blessed. I want you to walk in God's favor and have an exceptional week. Amen. Amen. Believe God. He is releasing fresh wind and fresh fire. Have a great night. Uh -huh.